Calling All Authors, the Your Book, Your Voice podcast with host Robert A. Lane features everything you need to know about narrating your audio book, but it doesn't stop there. We have special guests lined up from all aspects of the book publishing industry, and we also dive deep into what it takes to be mentally prepared for success as an author and in life. So please welcome your host, Robert A. Lane. All right. Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm Robert A. Lane, and this is Your Book, Your Voice. This is the podcast we do each week here, streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Uh, Appreciate you tuning in and joining us. Uh, If it's your first time tuning in, let me give you a quick uh, background, I guess, of who I am and what I do. I am an audiobook coach and producer, and I focus and specialize in helping published nonfiction authors take their book to the next level by turning it into an audiobook that the author, you as the author, narrates. So you narrate your own audiobook. I have a, a coaching program which is called Your Book, Your Voice, and I take you through the process of creating an audiobook, narrating it, and then getting you published on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. Uh, by the end of the six-week program. So it is six weeks. It doesn't take you six months or six years or even three months. You can have your audiobook narrated, recorded, and uploaded for publishing by the end of the six-week program. And uh, that's what I do as an audiobook coach. Uh, If you do want more information about that, you can always go to my website, uh, which is at robertlanecoaching.com. And uh, the way to uh, get in touch with me is you go to the website and book a call schedule a call with me and that's how we start it and uh, on the screen for those of you who can see the uh, video portion of this podcast we have that up on the screen take a screen grab of that uh, that link will take you to my calendar it is my personal calendar book a call i always talk to my clients before i uh, i enroll anybody into the program because i want to talk about your book and find out uh, not only what your book is about but what your goals are, uh, what your marketing strategies are, and then we get you enrolled and, of course, give you more details about the uh, the audiobook coaching program. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in detail uh, a little bit later on in the program about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. Uh, but for now, I do want to just talk to you a little bit, a little bit about um, time management. That was a topic that I had hit on this morning. I do a a coffee chat every morning on my Instagram page and on my Facebook page for Robert Lane Coaching. And uh, I just thought it'd be good just to share a little bit of that with you, especially if you're an author and you're writing a book, and especially if you are going to narrate your own audiobook. And that time and being able to manage your time and allocate specific time to do specific things, uh, that's the best way to move your business forward. That's the best way for you as an author to write your book and not have it be one of those things where like, yeah, I've been working on my book and uh, for the last 15 years. Uh, when I was uh, working in the uh, entertainment business, I also uh, wrote and produced a, a short film. And that's another thing that I hear from a lot of, uh, of creatives. And that is, you know, I've been working on my uh, script for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't need to do that. So managing your time is super important. So a couple of things that I wanted to share with you uh, before we, uh, by the way, I do have a very, very special guest that I'm going to be uh, bringing on uh, to uh, uh, talk to you about her book and her experience of uh, narrating her own audiobook. Uh, we're going to uh, introduce her in just a little bit, uh, but I do want to, uh, again, touch on a couple of things for time management. First thing that you can do uh, that will really help you out is do a time audit. And what that basically means is logging what you do specifically for an entire 24-hour period, and do that for at least three days and log everything. So let's say your day starts at 6 a.m. What do you do when you get up? How much time do you spend uh, getting ready for work, driving to work, uh, you're at work, lunch breaks, um, driving home from work, uh, meals, you know, lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner, 
Um, how much time do you spend watching TV or your chill time or maybe reading a book? How much time are you spending writing your book? How much time are you spending uh, working on your audiobook narration? All that stuff, even, even the time that you spend sleeping, okay? That is all super, super, super important. So log it and keep track of it because after three days, you have some awesome data to look at and you will be able to see well, you know what? I actually spend three hours a night watching Netflix, you know, or I'm doing things that maybe is busy work, but it's exactly that. It's busy work. It's not doing things to help move your business forward. Okay. So you can really see where your time is, and then you could reallocate your time so that you are dedicating more time to doing uh, something for your author brand because you are an author brand because you have a book and you're a published author uh you know so if you're working on your audiobook you have uh, an allocated time that you're dedicating to work on your audiobook or you know even if you're writing your book you have the specific times that you want to work on writing your book and then you can really figure out you know i, I can maybe not spend three hours watching Netflix. I can uh, have more time working on things that are really helping myself and my business and my life. So doing a time audit is great. The second thing that I wanted to share with you as well, and that is when you are making your to-do list, and I'm notorious <laughs> for making to-do lists that are like 30 things you know, every day. That's not how to do a to-do list. When you're creating your to-do list, you need to like really pare it down to not more than five uh, top priority things that you need to do for that day to get accomplished. That's gonna help you with your life, with your business, with you as an author, with your audiobook, whatever it is uh, that you need to get done for that day. Narrow it down to just five things that you need to do and then prioritize. What is the hardest thing on that list that you need to do? And I call that uh, my ugly ogre. <laughs> I call it my ugly ogre. Uh, when I wrote my book, because uh, I am a self-published author as well, I have a book called Lights Action You. Uh, one of the chapters that I talk about in this book is about time management, and I talk about the ugly ogre. But the what the ugly ogre is, is that one thing that is just this huge weight on your shoulders that you need to get accomplished. Take care of that first. Get that off your plate. Whether you know it takes the entire day or maybe even a half a day, the goal is to get that big project done and off your list. And I'm telling you, from a physical standpoint, you will feel a weight lifted off your shoulders when you get that done. Don't put it off to the next day, okay? Once you get that ugly ogre off your list, then you can focus on the rest of the things that, that are on your list. You will get more accomplished. You are utilizing your time more efficiently and you'll actually find that you can get more things done. Maybe you get through that, those five things on your list and you're like, you know, I could get a couple more things done today. Do it. Because when you think about it, we all have the same 24 hours a day, right? We have the same 24 hours in a day. How you utilize your time is what uh, is the differential between somebody who is successful and somebody who is struggling every day to get things done. When you're able to manage your time, allocate certain uh, times of the day to do certain things and then make those non-negotiable, like writing your book, like doing your audiobook narration, then you will get it done and you will get it done in a timely fashion. You know, it's funny, I had uh, someone uh, mention to me, wow, you know, your audiobook coaching program is six weeks? That's crazy. You can get your audiobook done in six weeks? It's like, absolutely, absolutely. Every one of my author clients who have gone through the program have been able to do that. And it isn't, they're not rushing through it. They sound fantastic. They sound like a professional narrator. And the most important thing about you as an author narrating your own nonfiction book is it's your story. It's your voice. Your unique style is in your written word. It's there. That is what makes you, you. That is what makes you so unique. So by narrating your own audiobook, you are preserving the integrity of your unique style and you're doing it in audio form. <clears throat> so it's such a great way to, again, preserve your unique style. You can hire another narrator, but you know what? It's gonna be their interpretation. And you definitely don't do AI because that's your, your cutting corners and you are cheapening your product by doing that. 
you're an author, you're an author brand. People love reading your books because of how you write your books and how you tell your story in written form. And you need to preserve that in the spoken word, which is why you as an author need to narrate your own audiobook, which is the whole point of why I created the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, if you want more information about that, you can uh, go to robertlinecoaching.com, book a call with me, love to talk with you about your book, and uh, we can get you enrolled. But I do want to uh, let you know that today is exciting because uh, I'm going to be bringing on a fantastic guest. Uh, her name is Mawish Syed. She wrote an incredible book called Purgatory to Paradise. For those of you who are seeing uh, the uh, video portion of the podcast, we have a, a, a graphic on the screen there. It is a fabulous book. I have her book right here, Purgatory to Paradise, How Cancer Helped Me Design an Authentic Life. And she did a fabulous job narrating her audiobook. It is a great book and a great story. And uh, we're going to be bringing her on in just a couple of minutes to talk about her journey, uh, what inspired uh, Mawish to write her book, and why she felt she is the one who needed to narrate her own audiobook, and uh, the reasons for that, the benefits for that. Uh, so uh, just super excited to uh, have her on as a guest. So uh, just stay tuned for that. We're going to uh, bring her on uh, after we take our, our first commercial break. But again, if you are an author and you've been toying around with the idea of turning your book into an audiobook, or here's another thing. There, I've, I've run into a few authors who have had books published and they maybe published them two or three years ago and they feel like, wow, well, you know, uh, well, why even bother? Well, the number one reason is you need to resurrect that book. You can bring it back to life. Do a relaunch of this great book that you've written. If you haven't been promoting it for the last three years, let's say, when you uh, had uh, released your book in the first place, people aren't going to know about it. If you turn it into an audio book, that is a, such a great way for you to relaunch your book, breathe new life into it, resurrect it, get people interested in your book again. And again, the audiobook world is growing and expanding. More people ask for uh, authors, hey, you know, is your book on Audible? Can I grab your book on Apple? And that's the other thing is that people ask for audiobooks by brand name. They ask for it by Audible, Amazon, Apple Books. And then, you know, there's other uh, distributors oh, like Barnes & Noble, you know, Spotify now is, is doing uh, audiobooks where you can listen to them on Spotify and other places as well. So uh, again, it's really important for you to have your book in audiobook form because that is an audience that you really need to tap into. And not only is, does that create another revenue stream, but that also uh, gives you uh, a, a whole world of people that maybe have not even uh, known that your book existed because maybe they listen to audiobooks and they they don't you know buy ebooks or paperbacks or hardcovers uh, and some people do and some people actually buy the audiobook and the ebook and paperback as well because they like to read along as they listen so it's a really really great thing so if, uh, again really consider turning your book into an audiobook because it's a market you don't want me more in detail, go to my website, book a call. Uh, and if you have any uh, questions about the audiobook world or as we are uh, going to be um, talking with Mawish Syed and her book, Purgatory to Paradise, if you have any questions for Mawish, uh, type them in, in the comments and we'll try to get to them as soon as we can. All right, this is Your Book, Your Voice. I am your host, Robert A. Layden with Robert Lane Coaching. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. I wanna grab this book and show it to you again because this is who we're gonna be bringing on when we come back, Mawish Syed. She is a number one best-selling author with her book, Purgatory to Paradise. That's up next, don't go away, we will be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? 
Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Some of you may get that. (laughs) reference <laughs> if you're a progressive rock guy and likes uh, Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer. Anyway, that's not why we're here. This is Your Book, Your Voice. I'm your host, Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching, and uh, just super excited to uh, bring on this fabulous guest as we stream live here on the Bold Brave TV network. Welcome, Mawish Syed, an incredible author, interior designer, and who is just a wonderful human being. Mawish, thank you so much for joining the show. Thanks so much, Robert, for the lovely introduction. (laughs) You're welcome. Now, we got this great book of yours here called Purgatory to Paradise. Uh, It's an incredible book, an incredible story, an incredible journey that you've shared uh, in this book. And uh, I've had the pleasure, of course, of working with you, uh, uh, helping you uh, create and narrate your audio book, which we'll talk about that experience in just a little bit. But I really want to dive into the story of Purgatory to Paradise. Now, this is a book that you've discussed and uh, taken people through a journey of of how you uh, got cancer and how you were able to uh, overcome and and beat this this horrible disease. It's, It's really fascinating. So first question really is why tell the story? Why put it in book form? What was what was the purpose? What what's the core reason of why you needed to get this out here for the world to read and to listen? That's a great question, Robert. Thank you. After I went through my cancer journey and found healing um, in my own way, which I say designing an authentic life, I designed my healing, and which is mind, body, spirit that whole mind-body-spirit connection. I was doing workshops at a local hospital, helping other cancer survivors basically uh, connect with their own beauty as well. So I realized that beauty is incredibly healing. And from there, everyone was asking me, is this a part of your book? Is this, you know, and, and so I'm like, I have to write this book. So that was, the book was already being written. I just really ended up making it a real goal for myself. And I set that goal and I accomplished that goal, just like I set the goal to do the audiobook with you. And what's really interesting about how you uh, laid out the journey in your book is that, you know, you, you give some history about uh, your background growing up. Uh, is, can you share maybe uh, uh, one of the stories from that time uh, growing up that, that was really influential for you that you have in the book? Sure. Um, my love of snakes and the whole mythology. So just before I even begin that, um, the whole backbone 
of the book is based on the story of Persephone. She's the goddess of the seasons, and she's the maiden who is abducted by Hades, god of the underworld, and taken down. And I use that analogy of cancer being my Hades and abducting me and taking me down, but instead of it being a tragedy, it was actually a love story. And the love story is interesting because most often cancer is cast in the role of the villain. The doctor is the hero, the patient is the victim. It's the perfect drama triangle. And I actually divorced myself from that rhetoric um, and created a whole new narrative basically where Hades was Persephone's divine lover and um, partner and so what did death have to teach me? And so I was doing a tango with de death with Hades and learning to do the tango in reality actually helped because little did I know the lessons that I would learn on letting Hades lead me and learning from all these experiences was something that I really wanted to share with people because there is a different way to deal with illness that is not putting you in a state of fear because when you're in a state of fear, you're contracted and you're not receptive. So this was really about loving myself through my cancer journey. That's great. And one thing that I want to point out that I find that I found incredibly enjoyable in your book and especially hearing you narrate your own book is the way you write and the way you express yourself is very visual. So when people are reading your book and when people listen to you do your audiobook narration, I mean, images are just popping in my head all over the place. I can see everything that you're going through. I see it. I see it in my mind's eye. And that is, is such an incredible experience, which really puts your, your book on a level that is just, it's incredible and it's enjoyable. Uh, and it really pulls you through all the emotions that you went through in your book. Um, what makes you so visual? <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great leading question, Robert. I am and have been a designer my whole life. Fashion design, interior design, jewelry design. And I feel like I, I am a visual person. I also talk about all the senses in my book and grounding in your body and creating an environment using your senses. And as far as my writing is concerned, I love painting a picture. I love creating, you know, I'm a visual, I call myself a visual storyteller as your designer. So I am telling your story through your home and the objects and the way things are put together. And so I think in that way, it would only make sense that my writing would also mirror that. And for those of you who are interested in Mawish's book, uh, it is up on Amazon, so check it out. It's on Kindle, it's on Audible, Audible, Amazon, Apple Books, the AAA, of course, we got that there. Uh, but you can get the ebook version, the paperback version, and the audiobook version. Check it out uh, there on Amazon, Purgatory to Paradise. You're going to really, really love this book. Now, the next question that I wanted to, to ask you, Mawish, is do you feel that there was maybe a single cause or something that may have been the trigger to getting cancer? Was there something? Well, I think, um, and I cite this in my book, that 95% um, of cancers are actually not genetically linked. Um, it's epigenetic. So epigenetic means uh, basically there are environmental causes, lifestyle causes, whether it's what you eat, where you live, or also what you feel. And I talked about um, being in a parasitic narcissistic relationship that literally drained me. And I was always in my sympathetic nervous system. My nervous system was always heightened. And I do believe that that level of emotional trauma contributed to creating the most fertile ground for that cancer to root in my body. And when you uh, 
So in your, in your book, you, you went to the doctors. Uh, this was something that was unexpected. Like, what, uh, can you describe the, uh, the emotional roller coaster that you went on when, you know, from you walk into the office and then when you leave, it's like, what just happened? Yeah, I wrote life and I spoke life as I knew it was no more. And I think a lot of us, we are taught as a society to have certain level of expectations and goals and, and plans. Everything is about, you know, being efficient and achieving your goal with maximum efficiency. When you get a diagnosis like cancer, it throws everything out the window. I feel like you suddenly, I mean, I definitely questioned everything. Like, what was I doing that caused this? Was there a reason? I started auditing my environment. I threw away my Teflon frying pans. I threw so many materials. As a matter of fact, I'm designing a course right now where people can audit their own environment to realize what are factors in causing disease because they are there, hidden and invisible, in modern society, we, for example, EMF, like we have so many technologies that in the whole human spectrum of life, if you were to able to take our human life for the tens of thousands of years we've been alive, EMFs are like the last, I don't know, three seconds of our existence. We don't know the ramifications of a lot of the things that we are dealing with and welcome with open arms without really knowing how it's going to affect us and how it's going to affect our biology. And that's a really, really good point because there are so many things that do affect us from uh, the outside, uh, outside, uh, uh, you know, influences, if you want to even call it that. Um, that can be very detrimental and being able to identify uh, these things is, is, is very important and it is very important to, uh, protect the body and to, um, you know, make sure that, that you can heal your body as well. And that's one aspect that I find incredibly, uh, interesting is how you healed your body. And you do talk a little bit about that in your book. Can you uh, touch on that? Sure rooting into my pleasure, rooting into my pleasure and beauty while my hair was falling out, while I was swelling up from steroids, while I had radiation burns, while I went through scars and everything. So I think a lot of people underestimate the power of pleasure, especially when they're sick and they think they need to wait to get better in order to feel pleasure. And I actually think it's the opposite. I think it allows you to heal. And what, what I designed were rituals of reverence. I basically ate during cancer. I ate even whether it was just like a banana, I would slice it and put like a pansy next to it to decorate the plate on my the most beautiful china and I used um, my silverware that was always stuck, you know, put away. During cancer, I redecorated my apartment because finally I was looking around. I had to be spending a lot of time at home. And I was, by the way, I was working throughout. I never stopped mm -hmm. working, but I, I never had time to actually work on my own space. So I ended up really looking around and realizing the power of your environment to help assist in healing you. We're talking with Mawish Syed, who is a number one best-selling author with her book, Purgatory to Paradise. And I always love holding this up because that's such a cool uh, cover. I uh, love the photo session that you did for that. That was very cool. Uh, and uh, which you can, you know, get that book on Amazon in ebook form, paperback form, and of course, as an audio book. Um, I do want to definitely dive into the audiobook process. How was it for you and that experience? Uh, I know we're going to be taking a break shortly, so I uh, don't want to go full dive, <laughs> deep dive into that yet. But uh, I do want to talk about that as well. And uh, 
Also, well, you mentioned about uh, talking uh, to other cancer patients and doing things at hospitals and stuff. And, and I definitely want to dive into that aspect of, of what you're doing now and what your, uh, what your goals and plans are. And uh, we'll also touch on how you've been able to utilize your audiobook to uh, you know, get speaking engagements and to do other things as well. So we will touch on all this great stuff. Uh, we are going to be taking a quick break. This is Your Book, Your Voice. I am your host, Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. My very special guest is Mawish Syed, who has written an incredible book called Purgatory to Paradise. She's sharing her cancer journey of how she was able to beat cancer and uh, how she wrote and published this great book and did an awesome audio book. So we'll get into that when we come back. Don't go away. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. And welcome back to Your Book, Your Voice. I'm your host, Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. And uh, we are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. My very special guest today is Mawish Syed, who has written an incredible number one best-selling book called Purgatory to Paradise, uh, which uh, she takes you on this incredible journey, and sp very inspirational journey of how she was able to overcome and beat cancer and really live an authentic life, which is just fantastic. So again, Mawish, thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us today. Um, I do want to touch on the audiobook aspect of Purgatory to Paradise. Uh, the first question is, why did you feel compelled to turn your book into an audiobook? Thank you, Robert. Great question. I knew that I needed to speak this story. When I was going through the process of doing that, little did I know the power that I felt when I heard myself speak my authenticity into vibration, right? In, in physical form. It's one thing to write, but it's another thing to hear yourself. And I can't thank you enough for giving me such a wonderful experience in stewarding that because the story was so personal and so emotional for me that I mean I told you when I would listen to the you know the edits and when they'd come back I'd start crying when I would be listening to the to myself and I still do I still listen to myself and I cry because I'm like that happened this happened and it's it's incredibly powerful for anyone who's writing their book to hear themselves speak I think it is super healing and it's mm. 
really important because it's your voice and your voice matters. I mean, why are we doing, we're in an age of the oral tradition and the reason for that. Oral tradition precedes written tradition. We've been right. human society. We've been practicing the oral tradition for thousands of years. Okay, we're adding technology to it now. There's a reason why we are wired to listen to each other. And the storytelling tradition, we think in narrative. That's how we form meaning, right? So I think in that way, it's so vital to understand that when you speak your story, you speak it into life. It's a whole other thing. I agree with you 100%. And uh, I know I say this a million times and I'll say it a million more in that you as the author are the only one who is able to speak your story the way that you intend it to be heard. It's your voice, it's your style, it's, it's your emotion. Uh, I talk about, you know, uh, in my audiobook coaching program about the intangibles, which is the energy, which is the emotion that you bring to uh, your narration, which comes through in the narration, uh, your purpose, your core reason. Again, the core reason of why you wrote the book, that same purpose is what comes through in your narration. And I have to say, uh, working on your book was an absolute pleasure because you would draw me in. You know, the most important thing about doing an audiobook is keeping your, your listener engaged from opening credits to closing credits. You know, and I, and I do this for a living. I love you know, being an audiobook coach and producer. I hear this stuff all the time. You know, and then when I do the final output of the, uh, you know, the audio files, you, know, you send me a chapter and I'm listening to it. You know, when I'm not doing the editing, when I actually get to really listen to, what, to the content, I get sucked into that story every time. You know, and then it's like, where's the next chapter? <laughs> what happens next? Send it over, man. I got to start editing that chapter now because <laughs> I want to know what happens. And that, and that's not, it's not a testament for the program. It's a, it's, it's a testament to the author that you have what it takes to narrate your own audiobook. And, and, and your proof right there, Mawish, because when I listen to your book, man, just even, even uh, the, the snippet, the audio clip that's up there on Audible, the clip ends and you're like, oh, wait. <laughs> and that's, yeah, and that's about orgasms. So, <laughs> but that, but that is a testament to, to you as an author that you can narrate your own book and it is your unique style that makes you, you. And that makes it so personal. Like you say, this is your story. You lived it, you breathed it, you experienced it. This is your emotional roller coaster that you went on. And we go on that ride with you when you speak your story. And that's, that's just a wonderful thing. Um, through the, uh, the process, uh, the technical side, uh, how was that for you? Was it, was it uh, easy for you to um, you know, just set your, your little studio up and, and do your narration? Because, uh, you know, again, in my course, I do provide the equipment for the authors. So, you have everything that you need to set up. How was that for you? It was great. But before I respond to that, I just want to add Merriam-Webster's word of, for 2023 is authentic. And mm -hmm. you are the author of your own book. You have authority over your own voice, your authentic voice. The etymology of this is not lost on me. Just want to mention that. Good point. Good point. As far as the equipment, you couldn't have made it any more simple. I am mystified. I, I, you know, I thought this was going to be so complicated. I mean, even giving me where the dials on the mic should go, I had never used any of this before. And by the way, I set aside time like five o'clock in the morning. I live in New York City, so it's super loud. And all of a sudden I realized like I had to pick my moment to be able to talk. So that was the only other thing. But honestly, it was so easy and so accessible. If anyone's on the fence, please 
do not hesitate. Robert makes it so easy for you. You should, there's no, you've got no excuse whatsoever, really. I mean, <sighs> at the end of the day, if you want to express yourself, I know everyone's got this fear that it's their voice. Who's going to want to listen? We don't like listening to our own voices. Get You have to get over yourself. It is something that I have to say that each time I listen to myself, I'm even more embedded in my story, even more embedded in my purpose, because that's what this book is about. It's about sharing my wisdom so that others can heal too. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, the accolades. Uh, you know, and it was obviously a pleasure to to work on your book. Uh, and again, one of the benefits uh, when you go through the coaching program that I teach is that since I do send you your your equipment, you have the opportunity to schedule it around your time, and that's really important because you want to be comfortable, and you want to be. Uh, able to record it on your schedule. Uh, there are other companies who, you know, produce audiobooks, but it's on their schedule in their studio using their engineers, their recording equipment. Gets super expensive, and uh, you know, and then you're pressed for time because you have to go to their studio to record on, on their timeline, not yours. This way, you, you know, like you say, f five in the morning. If that's the best time for you to record, you can because it's all there, it's all set up for you. So making it hassle-free and easy it was, was you know, one of the goals, of course, uh, of uh, doing this program is to, to make this as simple and easy. So Mawish, now what are you doing in regards to, or how has the audiobook uh, opened doors for you uh, for what you are doing now since you've uh, recorded and of course uh, uh, published your audiobook? I'm even more embedded in my own voice. I'm, I'm speaking. I've been a keynote speaker at the gala here. I'm really digging down deep. And I think, I, I feel like we have certain stages in our existence and I'm in the, the part of my, the chapter in my life where I'm the statesman. And when you've lived and lost and learned, you want to share that wisdom with others. And I think the audiobook allowed me to unmuzzle my voice mm -hmm. and unmuzzle myself and truly be uncensored in the way that I speak and to ground into my own authenticity. That's really, really great. Now, you mentioned a little bit earlier about some of the things that, that you're doing now. Um, Where's your focus now? Are you doing speaking engagements? Are you are you uh, putting together a program? Um, what are you doing now? Thank you. I am really interested in combining the idea of health and wellness into my designs. Um, mm. Thinking about neuroaesthetics and biophilia which are going to be the next great wave in design. Sorry, that's my cat behind me. Um, and really helping others to heal, whether it's someone going through cancer or a provider who's looking to create a space that is also healing and aligned with all the principles that I discussed in my book. And yeah, it's great. I'm really, really excited to share my course, which is called Claim Your Paradise. And that really extrapolates, it unravels a lot of the threads that I wove. So that way people can have accessible solutions to creating their own space that is beautiful and healing. And uh, will this course be available to individuals or is it to is it through companies or, or how are you uh, going to be able to present that to people? How are they be able to access this? I'm actually just seeing where where the stars take me. So I'm, I'm setting out like Moana and I'm past the reef and uh, we'll see. I mean, it's for individuals and for institutions. There's two legs. There's two versions of it. So we'll see mm. where it goes. And in regards to speaking engagements, is that something that you're going to continue to do? 
Definitely. Definitely. I am really invested in using my voice to unlock a lot of hearts and souls that are needing guidance when it comes to something as scary, as terrifying as cancer. I think um, my particular narrative is different because I'm not fighting with it. it there's no battle here. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I wanna mention is I'm actually really interested in, and I wrote a little bit about this in my book, that you know we've created these gorgeous birthing centers and designed spa-like serene spaces. But a lot of, and when I was going through cancer, especially during the pandemic, people were dying alone and terrified. And to be able to design spaces where people can pass in beauty and in pleasure, that's something that I'm really invested in right now. Mm -hmm. You did mention that in your book. I remember that, that uh, uh, the place that they're treating cancer patients is very industrial, sterile. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's not exactly the the greatest environment for for going for some you know through something that is that is so intense and just so you know to to make an environment to be more uh, I don't know if relaxing is really the word I'm looking for, but just just to feel more comfortable, uh, yes, I think yeah. is really important. Um, we're gonna have to take a quick break, Maush. I I, I want to keep you on uh, at least for. Uh, a little bit of the next segment so that we can uh, find out how we can uh, uh, stay in touch with you as well. Um, so don't go away. Uh, and you don't go away. If you have any uh, questions about uh, Maoish's book or about the audiobook world, please go ahead and feel free to mention them in the comments. Uh, and uh, you are listening to Your Book, Your Voice. I am Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We're streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network, and we're going to uh, wrap things up with Maoish when we come back. Author, radio show host, and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation and welcome back to your book your voice i'm robert a lane and uh, we are streaming live on the bold brave tv network my very special guest uh for this uh, podcast has been mawish syed and uh before we let you go, Mawish, first of all, pick up her book, <laughs> Purgatory to Paradise. This is such an awesome book. It's a great story, uh, a journey through uh, the ups and downs of uh, dealing with cancer, overcoming cancer, and, and coming out beautiful and coming out through this 
you know, in a positive way. And it's, it's, again, very visual. I love the fact that you are a very visual person. When you read it, you visualize it. When you hear it as your audiobook, you uh, definitely visualize it. So it's a great book. Uh, grab it on, on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books for the uh, audio version, of course. And then you can go to Kindle for the uh, ebook and, of course, paperback. Um, now, Maush, if people want to uh, get in touch with you uh, regarding um, speaking engagements or or maybe they want to uh, uh, talk with you about your program, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? The best way is to go to my website, which is msd-ny.com. And everything is there. Uh, you can see my portfolio. You can see all the different aspects, jewelry design, fashion design, um, basically all the history of, and my philosophy. So either that, and if you really want um, daily tips on life and living a beautiful life, uh, you can go to my Instagram, which is Mawish Saya Designs. Great. And then if someone is interested in your interior design, they can also go to the website for that too, correct? Yeah. It's all one-stop shopping. One-stop shop. <laughs> you can't uh, can't knock that. Uh, Mawish, again, thank you so much for uh, joining uh, the podcast today. Uh, your story is incredible. Your book is incredible. Your narration is incredible. And it was an absolute pleasure uh, working with you. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. And uh, before we wrap up, I do want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program, which uh, is the program that Mawish went through to create her audiobook. And this is a, a program that I, that I teach. It is a six-week program where you uh, uh, go from setup and preparation to doing your narration to publication. We get you done in six weeks. Uh, so the uh, best way to get in touch with me is to, uh, you can go to my website at robertlanecoaching.com. We're putting a graphic up on the screen for those of you who can see it. Uh, and again, it's robertlanecoaching.com for those of you who are only hearing the audio version. Um, and uh, check out the website and there are uh, buttons all over the place for you to book a call because that's how it starts. So if you're interested in turning your book into an audiobook, book a call with me. Uh, we'll put up that graphic as well because there is a link that you can uh, click in. And this is my calendar link. You will speak with me directly because I talk to every client before I enroll anybody. And the reason why I do this is because we are developing uh, a, a relationship, business relationship. And uh, you know it's even a personal relationship because your book is personal. And so when we talk, uh, I want to find out more about your book, more about your marketing strategies, uh, what you want to do with your book, and uh, I will give you definitely more details about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program uh, to get enrolled. But book your call, okay? Just book your call and let's talk. I don't hard sell you. If it resonates, we get you enrolled, all right? It's that simple. Uh, a couple of things that I do want to talk to you about the program. Um, I do provide the equipment for you. I send you a professional microphone, headphones, uh, sound isolation screen for the mic, pop filter. We go over the uh, the recording program that you're going to use on your computer to record your audiobook. Everything is laid out for you step by step. I send you the equipment that you need, and it's yours for you to keep. You don't send that back to me. It's yours. It's part of the program. All right, so you have that. If you ever want to use it to uh, record uh, your next book, you have it. <laughs> it's all there for you. So the first part of the program is setup and preparation. The second part of the program is about how to do great audio narration, how to be authentic. And yes, I'm glad Malish brought that up because authenticity is key. Being your authentic self, bringing your energy, bringing your purpose, those intangibles are what makes a great audiobook. And that's what makes you sound like a professional. And it, I'm telling you, I've listened to a ton of audio, audiobooks, and some are just mediocre. But those that are great are the ones that, number one, are narrated by the author. And number two, they bring their personality and their energy and their purpose and their emotion into their narration. And that's what makes a great audiobook compelling. 
and engaging, and you can do it. Love your voice, own your voice. This great thing that you have in your throat, this wonderful head is a resonator that creates this wonderful voice that you have. Love it, embrace it, because it is what makes you, you. And remember, people are not interested in how you sound. They are interested in what you have to say. It's all about your content. And when you deliver your content, when you narrate your audiobook and you are being authentic, they're going to be engaged from opening credits to closing credits, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So that's the second part of the program. The, uh, the final part is uh, delivery. You send your audio files to me, okay? Uh, so the way it works is that when you record your audiobook, it's all done in sections, not just one huge, massive file. If, for example, in my book, I have 14 chapters, so that's 14 audio files. So everything is done in, in sections, which actually makes it easier for you to record. You send those files to me, uh, and then I do all the editing for you, make sure they meet the exact specifications for publication, and then I upload the files for you to get published on Amazon and Audible and Apple Books, the AAA. So it's done for you. I'm your coach. I'm your accountability partner. I am your safety net. And I am your audio editor as well. It's a fully uh, encompassed program that will get you published in six weeks. You can get your book done, recorded, and published in six weeks. Go to my website at robertlanecoaching.com, book a call, and uh, I would so love to hear about your book and get you enrolled. All right, so that's uh, going to wrap it up for this edition of the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. Again, thank you so much for joining. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. As always, my sign-off is this. When you're out and about in the world, smile at a stranger. Say hello to them. Give them a compliment because that one small gesture of kindness can make someone's day fantastic because you don't know what people are going through. Maybe they're having a hard time and just a smile and a hello, and you could throw in a compliment. That can really make somebody's day. And that's just uh, being a good human. So go out there, be good humans, and uh, we'll see you uh, next week on the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. At this time here, 8 p.m. on the East Coast, that's uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And we are streaming live, of course, here on the Bold Brave TV network. Thank you again. We'll see you next week. Take care. This has been Your Book, Your Voice with host Robert A. Lane. Tune in each week for another powerful and informative episode of Your Book, Your Voice. Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV network.